to today's 3D print. Today we have the GTEC A10. This is GTEC's version of the Ender 3. And it's supposed to have power off zoom and filament runout. And from what I'm hearing other people, it prints pretty darn good. So we are going to open it up, we're going to assemble it, and we are going to beat it up a little bit. Stay tuned. Alrighty, we have the contents removed from the box, US power cable, cheat sheet, LCD screen, power supply with a stand, uh, sheet metal cover, which is interesting, that's different. Um, goodie bag, which we'll go through in a second, your base unit and your top gantry where I've already started removing the silly plastic strips. Um, I did notice that the backing plate for the, um, the um, hot end carriage, it was a little bit janky, too thin. Mine was actually bent, I had to bend it back. Um, so G-Tech, if you're watching this, See these nice thick metal you use for these plates on the end here? Use that metal here. Don't use this thinner metal. Now that's too janky. Mine was bent. I actually had to take a pair of pliers and bend it back to get this to sit on here properly. So hopefully that won't affect print quality. Um, it does not use the Creality style hot end. Looks like a like a kind of like a clone of a J-head type clone. It's a same hot end as the Creality, but it's got like a cylinder, like a E3D style, but smaller um, cold end on there. Um, same as the A30 for the extrusion unit, the feeder unit. Um, this is about the same. It's, it's basically a clone of the Ender 3, but it has their um, ultra base style surface on here. That silk screened um, auto release when it cools down um, PEI style surface on there. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to get back to the assembly and I'll let you guys know what's in the bag. Goodie bag, a unmarked 1 gigabyte SD card that only contains a dog G code. I'm assuming it's the same dog that's on the Ender 3. That's a little bit of, of a stinger to um, Creality. Your primary bolts to install your gantry, which is all you will need to assemble for the most part. A bunch of spare bolts, it actually says backup screw kit, that is nice to include. Zip ties, standard A to B, full size male USB cable, tool kit. No idea what this is. I don't know what that is. Um, CR10 style angled spool holder, spool, hammer nuts and screws to install the spool holder. And that's it. This is a very simple assembly. Screw that in, screw this in, screw the power supply in, you are done. The bed uses sadly the offset 2x2 two two configuration like the original Ender 3 did, so tightening them is a little finicky. I did get it tight so that it doesn't wobble and I don't feel any jankiness when I roll the bed. They are sensitive to being over tightened though. Is there tension relief for the bed? It's a metal bracket that bolts right through the heat bed and then the wire is zip tied to it and they are soldered onto the board so that is good tension relief for the heat bed the gantry is installed switches and steppers are all connected pretty straightforward I had to level the bottom because it was a little crooked I like this assembly with the plug unified I wish they would have unified the X into this plug as well so these would have all been in a single plug that would have been nice um, same XT60 connector for the power supply that's the last piece we have to install power supply and spool holder so we'll get right to it not forget to flip your switch 24 volt 15 amp make sure you flip that switch to 115 volts if you're in the US everybody loves the plastic here it comes ready <laughs> GTEC A10 is running it is not giving me any trouble um, I am having an issue with cooling here's the Marvin that I printed and as you can see, he's a little bushy on the bottom there. The cooling on the underhang there was pretty crap, and the same thing on the ears. Otherwise, the print quality is pretty good. I've opened up the hole on the fan cooling duct a little more, took a Dremel in there and widened it out a little bit. So we're going to see if that works any better, but I, I think it'll be fine. So stay tuned. I'll show you some sample prints that I got from my GTEC A10. Well, it's been a week, and I've been playing with the G10. A10, I'm sorry, the GTEC A10, and I've printed so many Marvins, <laughs> I just start them, this is a fraction of what I print, I, I print just the, basically until it starts the bridge and then I stop. I had some pretty serious problems with what I thought was a cooling problem, but the cooling problem didn't make sense, because these also came from the A10, as you can see, all the deep overhangs were absolute garbage. I mean, it, it, it couldn't even do the sides of the stack on the benchy. 
But then I realized it couldn't be a cooling issue because the bowel's perfect. And it blows like crazy. The, the fan duct is actually pretty good. I ended up having to have GTEC send me the STL file to reprint this because thinking it was a cooling obstruction issue, I hacked up the one that came with it. Turns out it wasn't. Um, and I'm not going to be able to tell you what's wrong either because I have no idea what's wrong. <laughs> it just stopped being wrong. Um, <laughs> so even down to 180 degrees Celsius where it was starting to skip a little bit, I still had horrible overhangs. Not overhangs. Bridges. Any place where filament was unsupported, bad. And... Um, I checked everything, I tried everything, I could not figure out what's wrong. I switched filaments, and it's absolutely perfect. Okay, I didn't even lower the temperature. This is CC Tree Sparkling Gray. All the bridging is absolutely perfect. Even the inside of the tower and the cabin in there, perfect. Okay, what changed? Filament? It didn't like the filament? Nope. I switched back to the orange filament, and now it's perfect. I didn't re-slice this. I didn't do anything. It's just printing perfect now. <laughs> My best guess, and this is a guess, is that there was some sort of a obstruction in the filament path in the hot end that was causing back pressure. And the pressure increase was very small. So while filament was printing on top of filament, it was fine. But what I noticed is when it got to a bridge, like say it had to print across this gap, okay? And it would get from here and go to this gap and go across. As soon as it hit the gap, the it, was, it was almost like a water gun. The filament would just shoot out and, and loop down and, and catch up over here. It was almost like it was under pressure. And I think maybe it was. I think there may have been a small obstruction in the hot end. And... Um, that had a little bit of a pressure build up and when it hit this opening and no longer had the pressure being held back by the nozzle sitting on top of the previous layer of filament it would hit here and just squirt the filament out I thought the fan was blowing down the filament I thought this fan here was too strong it was pushing the filament down no I don't know what it was I suspect that there was a little something stuck in the hot end and that this filament the CC tree filament with the glitter it's rougher it's got a coarser texture to it, and I think it acted like kind of like sandpaper and took out whatever obstruction was in there. Because now when I switch back, it's fine. I put the original fan duct back on there, printing fine. Um, now, print quality was not that great. It had some, you're probably not going to be able to see this very well, but you can see the way the light changes. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Um, it has some pretty gnarly salmon skin and noise artifacts. And they use a non-standard board. It's a custom board inside this brain box here. You cannot plug stepper drivers into it. Um, stepper dampers. And that's TL smoothers. You cannot plug TL smoothers into this printer. Because it, you, instead of having the separate four-pin connectors for each stepper driver, it has a proprietary unified connector. So it's one large connector that all the wires come out of to go into this unified arrangement that comes up through this harness um, so what I had to do was I had to plug the TL smoothers in at the stepper motor okay now as you may be you should be aware the TL smoothers use the there it's four wires all along the whole stream here but the steppers themselves have a six wire connector you're only using four wires but there's a six pin connector on the stepper four pin connector on the smoothers and the brain board. So I had to take the um, six pin connector off of this wire coming out of the brain box and put it and take the four pin connector off of one end of this cable on the smoother and swap them. So I, I wrote down the, the pattern, the order of the wires and on this one here I put dots on them, one, two dots, three dots, four dots with the red being the four dots so that I knew the order they had to go. So I put these wires into the four pin connector and these wires into the six pin connector and it worked perfectly. The improvement in print quality is staggering. You can see how this looks all molted and how the light scatters and how this is all super shiny. 
because now almost all the salmon skin is gone. Huge, huge improvement. If you have a GTEC A10, you will absolutely want TL smoothers if your machine experiences salmon skin. And so now the Benchy prints with no, see the striation pattern on the side of the house there, see it, see the diagonal lines, and they are gone. Nice and clean now. The Marvin, super clean. Nice, clean Marvin. I have no complaints. I printed in a large vase, and it printed spectacularly. I have no issues with this. I do see some lines. You can see a repeating line pattern. It's like a, a very, very small, almost like velocity painting line. I suspect bearing. I suspect it's catching at some point, so I gotta work on that. It's minor, it's very, you have to look for it to find it. Um, printed a proto gnome in the CC tree sparkling gray. Very nice print. Z seems not too bad. Uh, it's nice. It makes good prints. I also, um, Devin Montez, I think, make anything. He made a geode spherican. So I printed that. There's a lot of pressure on this print, so you definitely want to use a brim. You can see I had a little bit of warping there. So definitely use a brim with this print. So there it is at 100%. These things are kind of cool. I'm going to do a whole video on these things. You can see the way they, they roll back and forth like that. It's kind of neat. So here it is at 200% printed on the A10. And here it is at 400%. Very cool. This one had a nice brim, so I was able to hold it down. And this was all printed on the A10. And this is the new Amazon Basics filament that I'm running on here now. It's translucent green. Prints nice. I like it. It's kind of got a, um, I don't know what to describe. It's got that, that a cheesy jewel-like green to it that I like. And I'm going to use some stone paint to put a stone finish on the outside edge here. But that's pretty neat. But overall, it's not bad. Would I buy this over an Ender 3? No. If, buy an Ender 3. But if you have one of these printers, they're not a bad printer. Or if you can get this printer on sale, it's not a bad printer. You can make it print nice. I do like the full-size SD card slot. I do not like the proprietary connection for the... Um, step motors, that's annoying. Um, I like the hot end. I'm not so thrilled by whatever problem I had, but it's got good cooling. And the fan duct works well. It's giving me no problems. Uh, overall, not a bad machine. It's just, it's not great. I, I would pick a Flash or an Ender 3 over this, but it's not bad. I do like their super plate. It works very well. The prints stick well and release well. Make sure you grab yourself some 90, you know, 70 or 91 percent alcohol. It's like 350 at the um, you know Walgreens or Rite Aid or whatever. And then make sure you have I don't have it handy. Make sure you have a microfiber towel too. You want to wipe that dry until you feel the towel starting to grab the surface. That's when you know it's nice and clean. Overall, not bad. Decent machine. So, um, I've been using it all week. I will continue to use it. It does print well. I did a nose cone as well. This was also done on the printer. There's some extrusion issues where it's less than perfect, but it's not bad. There, you have to look for them to notice them. But overall, not a bad machine, but I wouldn't exactly consider it a star. So, that's it. You guys have a great time.